Here we have a GraphQL server. We have an auction that has bids and we have some static data for our auction. We then have some type definitions to query for an auction and we have a mutation to bid on one of those auctions. Then we have some resolvers that simply return that auction from the static list and a mutation that mutates that static list. Obviously this isn't something you typically see in production, but it illustrates the idea and what we're going to be doing next. Then we have a root resolver on our auction type that sorts the bids and returns the highest. Quite often we turn to GraphQL subscriptions. Subscriptions are great for knowing what changed and why, but there are often times where you simply don't care and just want the updated data. GraphQL live queries is a concept that's been around for quite a while and implementations can vary. Today we'll look at the in-memory live query store plugin that allows us to create a new in-memory live query store to keep track of and invalidate data in memory. The in-memory live query store is a drop-in replacement for the execute function provided by the GraphQL package. This replacement is a envelope plugin. Envelope is a plugin system for GraphQL and GraphQL Yoga is the perfect place to be using this. When queries are invoked with the custom directive live, it will return an async iterator instead of a typical promise. This can be then used to send updates to the client. This is similar to what we did with GraphQL subscriptions and server sent events. We can see here we get the title, highest bid, and array of all the bid amounts. Then inside of another window, we execute a GraphQL mutation to submit a new bid. We can see here that we get the response 500, but if we come back here, we see that this is not receiving that up-to-date data. If we now run this again, you'll see that we get the highest amount 500, but we've had to re-execute that query. It's not listening for any updates to be sent over the server. Let's now go ahead and install some new dependencies. We'll first install the live query plugin, then we'll install the in-memory live query store, and then we'll install GraphQL tools and the utilities package. Now with that installed, let's head back to our server.ts file. At the top, we'll import some things. We'll import use live query, in-memory query store, the GraphQL directive from GraphQL live query, and then we'll import AST from directive. Next, let's go ahead and instantiate a new in-memory live query store, and we'll assign this to live query store. This takes in some optional configuration to change the behavior, but we'll leave everything at its defaults for now. Then further on down where we have our plugins array, we can add use live query. Then we can pass to this the live query store. And this is what we named our variable. These plugins work with the envelope plugin system. This now means that the use live query will take over the execute function of GraphQL. Before we can use the at live directive, we need to add it to our type definitions. Thankfully, we can use the import GraphQL live directive. So inside of our array for our type definitions, let's now go ahead and add that. We'll invoke AST from directive from the GraphQL utilities package. Then we'll pass along that GraphQL live directive. Now that we have this, we have everything ready for us to implement the invalidation part of our GraphQL query. If we start our server and we head back to our graphical interface and refresh, now when we come to write our query, we can see that we have the directive live on query. If we run this, we can see that this is now waiting for updates over the server. And if we stop and restart with DevTools open, we can now see when we click on this, that this is now an event stream. The content type is no longer JSON, but instead a text event stream. This is similar to what we did with server sent events and GraphQL subscriptions. Now, if we perform that same mutation, we'll notice that nothing changes here. We don't get anything new sent to us over our event stream. That's because we're not invalidating anything. We need to do that further on down inside of our mutation. So here I will call live query store and we'll invoke the invalidate function. If we pass query.auction, this will invalidate anything in our live query store that is of the auction query type. But what we'd prefer to do is invalidate the actual auction by ID. So instead, what we can do instead of passing query.auction is we can say that we want to invalidate auction where the ID is that of the auction ID that we passed in. Now, if we go back and re-execute that live query and we perform the mutation to add a new bid, we should see here that the highest bid is automatically added for us and sent to us over the wire. No matter what we send, this will automatically be added to the array of bids and it will update the highest bid. All of this works in memory. So if we stop the server and restart, everything that we have here will be lost. You'll want to reach for something like Redis in production and we'll explore that in another video.